What's up, everyone? It's your boy Terry, speaking from the garage shop again. You know, if it's some more big bang for the buck product and info, yeah, that's right. Now, if you guys have been following me, you'll know that I removed the frame from underneath my 67 Chevelle project, all right? And then we installed the Summit Racing Equipment Frame Bracing Kit, and we braced it up, painted it, and made it look all kinds of pretty. But I've been getting a lot of questions. Hey, Terry, listen, we know that the frame, we know you took care of that, and we know that it's on point, all right? But what about the what about the body? What condition is the body in? That's a good question. A lot of people have been asking about the body of the car, what kind of condition it is. So, you know what? We're going to turn the camera around because the camera's actually sitting on the trunk of the car, and uh, we'll have a little chat. At this time, I want to thank each and every one of you guys that come on here every time I do a video because I got to show the love because you guys have been showing the love. And I want to thank you guys. Thank you guys for all the support, all the questions and comments. Keep them coming. And advice. Hey, listen, if you guys want to, you know, chime in and say, hey, Cherry, won't you try doing this or doing that? I'm, I'm always open for ideas. So to continue to love and support, please hit that subscribe button right about now. And make sure you do it three. Hit the subscribe, hit the thumbs up, which is the likes, and you know... That bell, ping! You wanna hit that bell. That way you'll get notified every single time Government 66 Terry Wilson puts a video out. And like I said, this is just beginning. I got a lot, a lot, a lot of videos coming and cool vendors, we're gonna introduce you to them and a couple more surprises, which uh, you guys are not gonna you know, expect, but it's gonna hit you. And you definitely gotta be a part of it. Please subscribe, likes, boom, bell. Thank you very much, I really appreciate it. Now we're trying to get this thing ready so we can go to car shows, go to LS Fest, and you might see me in LS Fest the Trailblazer SS towing the 71 Chevelle. I don't know, but we're trying to get out there. So to get everyone up to speed, we're gonna show some video footage when I first got the car to the point where it is now. So let's video flashback to the beginning. Ha! No! That's too far back! Well, check this out. That's right, this is my new project that I'm gonna be working on. This is my 1967 Chevelle, which I picked up for a song, and I'm gonna do everything from soup to nuts, soupy nuts. The car is in primer, and you know when you get a car that's in primer, it's you're gonna find some hidden stuff. So we're outside the garage shop now, and uh, he sold a blast to my 67 Chevelle. Check him out, look at him go. <laughs> Takes no time. This car's gonna be stripped in about a matter of an hour. Man! So what Scott's doing here, he is using a baking soda compound, I guess it's called. So one big rainstorm, all this all this baking powder is gonna go away off the property. After an hour and a half of blasting and a quick rinse down with warm water to get up to remove all the salt. This is what I end up with. All the paint removed. The panels that still have paint and primer on it, they will be replaced. So I'm just gonna point out which issues I have with this car that I'm gonna have to take care of. Come with me. Here's an issue right here. Lower panel was replaced on the rear, but instead of butt welding, he lap welded. The person who ever had this before, lap welded. There's one issue. Ah. Messy. Look at all this. All caked up Bondo all up in here. And if someone didn't take the time, they thought they could just patch it up, whatever. Rocker panel, gonna have to be repaired. Door is gonna have to be repaired. Driver's side fender. Looks like they were doing some old school body work. You see how they used to, you know, before they had the, the dent pullers that, that kind of weld the little uh, stitch there and you could pull it out with a dent puller. They had, well, you have to actually drill holes and put like a screw in here and then pull it with the puller. So this is all mangled up, but I think it can be banged out. And then if you look at the bottom, see again, I'm thinking this may require a, a patch panel on the bottom and we might be golden. So we'll find out. Passenger side, you got a little issue right there. We can cut this out and weld a piece of metal, you know, straighten it out and play with it. Again, GM, you know, and uh, so I gotta take this down to see what's under there. But under this, this seems like it's okay. A little patching on the rocker here, all right? Because I kind of don't want to replace the rockers, but if I have to, I will. The back deck, 
Check this out. Instead of butt welding this, they lap welded it. You know? So we got to address that. That's got to be addressed. I want to get this right. They hung the quarter panel on the old quarter panel. Again, see, this is a lap weld. All the way to the point where it comes right here. Again, a lap weld. The car has its issues, but you got to keep you got to keep your eye on the prize and you got to stay focused because how awesome is this car going to be once it's all said and done? You know, it's going to be a nice ride. This is my full driver's side quarter panel from AMD. It's an AMD quarter panel, and I feel that they fit the best. And when you restore one of these old school cars, you're going to find surprises. And I found a lot of surprises with this car. All right? And it got to the point where I was going to replace the whole entire rocker panel. If I replace this whole, just take this whole rocker panel out, that's going to be a lot of measuring for me to do. You get straight edge, and you use what you have here as a guideline. As far as you take this straight edge, right? Hold it like this and you make sure that there's no gap in between and you can weld it right in place. And then you're done with this. This, this, this was an easy repair. And you do the same with the top. Now remember, the quarter panel wasn't on. So you can do the same with the top. But even now the quarter panel is on so I can't show you. But make sure that it's straight that way and there's no space between. This rocker was totally eaten up. is I went on eBay, you no, know, I went on Craigslist, and I found a guy who was parting out a 67 Chevelle, and he was good enough to cut out part of the cow so I can have this piece because there was nothing under here to bolt my fender, the bottom of the fender to. So all this was rotted out and everything. So what I did was I popped all the spot welds out of the piece that I got, the, 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 the piece that the guy sent me, and he sent me the other piece too, the other side, for like 25 bucks, which was really good. And I just welded, I had to re, pretty much remake this whole part of the car. And then I was able to finish my weld in here with the front of the rocker. And again, I used the straight edge. I used that 40% so I can, you know, get a straight, you know, perfect gap between the, the top of uh, the rocker and the door. Now on the other side. This is what was in my rocker. This is a small piece of the rocker on the passenger side that I cut out. And I replace. See, look at this. <laughs> See, this is what I'm talking about. Look at this. This <laughs> is all Bondo. Look at this. And people call this quality work. Unbelievable. Being I didn't use the whole rocket from the other side, I was able to take a small piece and cut this out. As you can see, this is what this was. You see? This rocker isn't that bad at all. And what I was able to do here was fill some of the holes. There was a little, there was a little pinholes. You know, see how you got holes like that? You don't even try to fill those. I'm just gonna cut from here. Let's see. From this point, let's say from this point to about the end of the rock. And now this was the piece that was remaining from the other side. It worked out pretty well because it's the same, it's the same shape. I just turned it around and cut the top off and then I just, you know, made it fit. Now remember, this again, thanks to the guy from Craigslist, from this point on down was missing. Now see, this is what I did that was pretty slick, I think. Okay, now you remember the piece that I got, the original cow? It had, I took the front piece of, I removed the front piece off because this has like a little shape to it. I don't know if you can see it. This has a little shape that contours to the bottom of the fender. So instead of trying to recreate one, I just took like maybe an inch of it off, cut it like that, and I tack welded it in place. And uh, so it fits perfect. Finally, we got the quarter panel. One of the quarter panels hung. It's not in place like with sheet screws or welded yet because we still got to do a little bit more mocking up. I got some used doors. I got some fenders for the car. So it's progressing pretty nicely. And uh, we're going to talk about these quarter panels for a little bit. This particular quarter panel, it goes all the way up into here. So for me to install this quarter panel as one, because remember, you got to tuck it into here. You got to brace under here, you got to tuck it in. You got to tuck it here. You got to brace over here, but you got to tuck it in the bracket. You got to tuck it up under and one that sits over. Not to mention, you also got to put it over the wheel well, the wheel housing. All right, so 
it was a hassle to try to put this thing in hold. Now, if you remember, I had damage right about right here. I had damage right about right here, somewhere like that. And I'm a believer is if you're gonna start a project, just do it right. I mean, even if you're doing it for to sell, take your time and fix it. So I wanted to fix that inner structure in here. The only way I could do it was to take the spot welds out of here and pull the whole quarter panel out. Now remember, the quarter panel is, there's a, there's a support like right about right here where the top of that quarter panel will weld to. So I had to go in there and break those welds, break the spot welds, and I was gonna take the whole thing out. But to replace it as one, unless you have this roof off and you're doing it at the same time, it's, it's impossible to maneuver this big, almost seven foot piece of metal into place. So what I had to do is I cut this like right around here, you can see it, all right? And then now I only have this small piece about this big to finagle with, to get up under there. And then I tacked it back in place, all right? And then now I got from here to here to the bottom, which is a lot easier to move around because now you just gotta kind of lift it up and do, you know, it's, it's, it, it takes some time, but I was able to put this piece from here down and connect it into here. And that's how I, uh, you know, had to take care of this driver's side quarter panel. Now this quarter panel was a little bit easier because I didn't have damage up behind here on this panel. So I was able to just cut the new quarter panel right along here and just hang it, you know? So this was easier, this was an easy repair. How do you know if you need a new floorboard, all right, a new floor pan, all right? You take a hammer like this, right? Now, if you could take this hammer and go through the floor like that, chances are you're gonna need a new floor pan. The life expectancy from one of these cars, an old school car like this, is five, 10, maybe 15 years. GM never expected you know, these cars would be around 50 years later, especially when they were designing them and building them. Because if they had, they would have put better rust proofing down the floor. Now what happens is, you know, 50 years of, you know, you, you sit in the car and, you know, rain. Now, you know, people didn't used to baby these cars. People used to drive these cars in the rain, the snow, all kinds of crazy weather. And they put their wet feet all up in here and the water would drip down and settle right about right here. And then what happens is now, you know, you wash your car and you forget to put the floor mat back in to protect the bottom of the rug and all that. So now you got your wet feet sitting up in here, dripping the water all the way down. Water gathers around here and that's when you get that nasty mold funk, nasty smell in your car and everything like that. You get a guy, you know, who restores the car 50 years some odd later and now he's got to go and replace this board. Let's get to work. <laughs> Now it's time to do a little bit of trimming and we should be good to go. All right, so here you go. All right, so I welded the piece in, cut it out, welded it in, ground it down a little bit because sometimes you get a little heavy with the weld, <laughs> with the welder, but even still, you know, this is smooth. So like I said, when I take the car off of the frame, I can get up under there, smooth it out, and we'll be good to go. And there it is. I left this open because I'm going to cut this piece out and uh, so I can fit the T56 once I finish doing all the body work on this car. Strong! Hope you enjoyed that little flashback, but now you guys are all up to speed. Now, 67 Chevelle bodies on the rotisserie. See it rocking? Ah, uh, it's rocking. All right, but before we flip it over so we can see the work that has to be done, we're gonna have a little talk. You gotta keep this in mind. Couple of tips. First, before you even, you know, go to see a car, be truthful with yourself. Tell yourself how much work you wanna do and how much work you can do. Now, to me, I believe all men should be paid in full. All men should eat. All men should, should definitely make money and, and live the best life. But when you go and you start trying to take advantage of people, that's when I get a little, how should we say, agitated. Now, the guy tried to take advantage of me. He didn't know that I knew what was going on because he made it seem like he had me come all the way down, made it seem like it was all that because he told me that it was, the car was ready for paint. Seeing this and knowing what I'm looking at, you know, he wanted thousands more than what, uh, let's just say that I didn't pay. <laughs> I, and uh, he, was, he showed his hands that he was desperate. And so I took well advantage of that. I normally don't, but 
when you go and try to take advantage and think maybe the person don't know what they're talking about and you show me that you're desperate, you know, it's on. And so, as you see, I got the car. Take a friend that has nothing vested in it. You got to take a level-headed friend that's going to be like, you got to look at this. You got to see this. You got to do that. You know, take someone, always take someone with you. So that way, you know, like I said, you have someone who, who will point things out and slap you back down to reality if need be. Always, you know, write things down that you want to check out. Even if you're going to, if you're going to see the car on a Saturday and here it is a Tuesday, start there. You may think in your mind that you're going to, oh, I got to remember to ask this question. But then when you're there, you forget. Write those notes down. And uh, I think you'll be okay. Now, having said that, let's take a look under the car to show you what types of repairs the guy said he did, which when I was there, I saw that he didn't. And so now the repairs that I'm going to do. <laughs> be careful out there. 67 Cheval on the rotisserie. So let's flip it on over. All right. Oh. Oh. Oof. Yeah. I know what you guys are thinking. <laughs> All right. Let me get some light on here. Shine the light. Now, this is one of the issues I'm going to have to address. Look at this. You see this? This is what I'm talking about. This is what you can expect. Now, the guy tried to hide it with seam sealer. Look at this. That was all sticking out like that in the trunk. So what I'm going to do is get an inner and just trim it and just put it back in there. No big deal. It is a new trunk floor pan, but as you can see, he seam sealed all this stuff right here. And the weld you can pop, so I'm going to re-weld this. Re-weld the support for the for the, the gas tank. And as you look, you see it's not even sitting properly down in the metal. So we're going to redo all that. And also the drop-offs, you can see. <laughs> I laugh every time I see this. Now, as far as welding, look it. He didn't even weld it. Look it. The person didn't even weld it. This is what is from He might have welded on the inside, but this is we gotta tack that down. We're gonna take care of that. And you can see right at the bottom there, it's rotted, the support. Alright, so you have a bushing that that supports right here and right there. So I have this new piece right here, so I'm going to replace it. I'm not sure if I'm going to replace the whole thing or if I'm just going to cut that out and I can get this out. That's not a big deal. All right. Now, as you can see, we're going to move forward. All right. Now, he told me that he redid the floorboards, and he did, but look it. See? He didn't smooth it down. He could have tapped it down, did a better job. Let me get the light. Could have did a better job, but he didn't. All right. But So I'm glad I got it. All right, now if you look, you see the support right here? It's a little rotted. I got three of them. There's one, there's two, and there's a third one right there. Or should I say first, second, third, and that would be the fourth. So I'm just going to cut it and tack it in. As you can see, it's not even there on the other two. You see right there? It's not there because he didn't take the time out once he rep repaired the floor or tried to repair the floor. You know, put it in from this point that he didn't attach the rockers. So the proper way to do that is to take all that out and get new rockers, or should I say inner rockers. And like I said, I'm going to cut, because you can see right here, <laughs> so we cut it. So I'm going to cut this from this point, get the new, the new brace and weld it here and weld it here, make it a little longer on both, or should I say one, two, three, four. This one I can get away with and that's cool. So it needs, a, it needs some work. This is just what's out there. This is the type of work people are passing off as quality work. And they hide it with a lot of seam sealer. So remember, you go see a car, and if it's all in primer, definitely, definitely be a little wary. Proceed with caution. So that's pretty much it. So we got some work to do. So there you have it. I showed you where we were, where we are, and where we're going. So now once the body of the car is all tight underneath, we're gonna set up the frame, uh, put the suspension on it, and then we're gonna put it back under, under the body and the car will be as one. But in the meantime, Pontiac G8 door panels, seats, everything, we're gonna put them in this car. We're gonna graph them in. So the guy that's gonna do that is my man Gillen up in uh, Gillen Interiors. And the cool part is we don't have to wait because Gil has a 66 Chevelle up there right now that's getting some work done so he can use that 
as a template to get my panels done where I don't have to bring the car up. So he's gonna he's gonna graft in the seats and everything, give them back, and we're gonna put them in. So we're gonna be moving on this project because again, I wanna get this thing running as soon as possible. We already have plans for the engine. That you wanna definitely stay tuned, but that is another video for another day. But until the next time, Again, I want to thank you guys for joining me. And like I said, we're going to be moving quick. We're going to be jumping back and forth on different projects. Because there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that going back and forth to another project. You know, like getting your mind fresh on something new. Because we got the Le Mans project. We got the 67 Chevelle project. We got the 69 Camaro project. How about that? Our brother's Corvette's going to be coming up in here. And we might even have a... Uh, a 62, 63C10 might be even showing up in here. So we gonna, we got some projects. And uh, and like I always say, it can't be done without you. And I really appreciate the love. So like I said, definitely on all social medias, make sure you follow me on Facebook, Terry Wilson, Coverman66, and I think there's another Terry LSX. Follow on all of them because I got a lot of stuff jumping off. And I want you guys to be involved. Now, if you have a comment or question, Hit me up anytime because you know I'm not a hard brother to find. <laughs> I just made a rhyme. Ooh. But as always, as always, please mm, be easy and I'll catch you guys real soon. Take care.